All right. What's up, Dylan? Uh, my name is Oscar Perez. I work at Montclair State University. Um, and I uh, saw your video, enjoyed it very much. Uh, I put some notes in the uh, spreadsheet here that you may uh, that you may receive, but I wanted to kind of reiterate how much I enjoyed your performance. And I want to give you a couple of things that I, uh, I think are important to think about in terms of playing solo piano. Okay, I've been, I've been doing it for quite a while, and I can tell that you are definitely well-practiced, like you understand the material, you have a game plan, and you executed it very nicely. So congratulations, congratulations on that. A um, couple things I wrote that I'll reiterate here. Uh, first of all, I think the major thing, you know, you played everything really well and you set out, like I said, to do what you wanted to do, and that was fantastic. Uh, but a couple things I, I would keep in mind is I think you're sitting a little bit too far away from the piano. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure is that your elbows are kind of at your sides and maybe in front of you just a hair, but yours are kind of extended way out, almost like Frankenstein. Uh, and if you've ever held something heavy, the, the further you put your arms out in front of you, the heavier it is. You know what I mean? Um, so when you're playing, you want to make sure that your elbows are kind of here and not here. All right? Um, that's the first thing I would say because then you have greater control. You have greater range across the instrument. Um, and you also have more of what I call a physical and rhythmic core to play from. Uh, so you don't feel like you're kind of like... Uh, aiming at the keys, but they're all right there in front of you and you feel like it's, you know, you're able to use the upper body uh, gravity to have the arms come down right underneath, you know, like right over your lap as opposed to out in front of you. It makes a big difference. Um, okay, so in terms of Blue Bassa, I thought that was really nice. You played really well. Uh, the the bass line that you played was very nice, but it got very repetitive really quickly. So my suggestion is to come up with five or six alternatives to that, that give you that kind of motion in terms of the rhythm and they also um, describe the harmony in the way that you want but maybe are less active so that when you play the melody with that bass line then you can cut it down to something a little bit more sparse and you can start your solo and it feels like the listener goes from here to here and then you can build it back up so that it has you can create that journey for the listener in terms of density i wrote so um, if you start off with something dense and then you go to something sparse and then you build it up over the course of each chorus, um, then you can create that motion. Uh, and it gives you more freedom to do stuff in your, in your right hand. So right now, your left hand was, was so active that it didn't leave a lot of room for your right hand to do a bunch of stuff. Um, and so that's one thing I noticed that you can, you can do. Um, check out solo pianists and how they do it. Check out the way Bill Evans does it, the way, the way Kenny Barron does it, the way Sir Roland Hanna does it. Uh, what they do is they create these elements in their playing and then um, they change those elements. They change the, the rhythm or they change the density. They also change the volume, which is something I think you should do as well. Everything was pretty forte the whole way through. With the exception of a couple places, I would really explore dynamics. They are the, di uh, they are the drama of the of the music you know um so that's that's one thing i would i would focus on um your tempo was pretty good you slow down a couple of times to kind of get that left hand bass in there um i think you were playing something in your right hand you didn't quite get out in blue boss so you slowed everything down so you can get it and then you came back in you brought it back up the tempo which is cool um but you have a nice sense of tempo which is nice uh really good um let's see i think other things that i would say that you should um that you should focus on besides the volume sitting closer to the keyboard um, and also the uh, the density of the lines um, is to practice like with the second tune very good I don't know what the tune was um, I'm gonna guess that it's something that you read and memorized I would try playing slower to get greater accuracy so that when you speed it up it's right there in front of you um, so Accuracy and repetition equals speed, but speed and repetition do not equal accuracy. So you want to make sure that you're practicing so slow that when you go to speed it up, it's like writing your name fast. You just, you can do it because you've written your name a thousand times. I mean, probably a million times. So that's the same thing with, you know, so sometimes you had some parts of the tune that you went for a note and you kind of hit the, you know, you hit the crack between two keys. You know, you want to clear all that stuff up before you speed it up and then speed it up incrementally. Uh, the other thing that I was going to mention, um, the pedal. So 
Uh, I had, I've had many teachers in the past, classical teachers, jazz teachers, they all said the same thing. Practice without the pedal and then put the pedal in as you see fit. Um, if you can't connect all the stuff and play legato without the pedal, the pedal's not going to do the work for you. The pedal is something that basically just helps to bridge that gap when your fingers can't physically reach and you want to play legato. But you were riding the pedal pretty hard, which means there was a lot of... Um, Moments where two chords kind of sounded at the same time and it kind of added a little bit uh, of noise, white noise to what otherwise would be very clear. It's this chord, then it's this chord, then it's that chord. So practice, it's going to be hard, but practice without the pedal. Most jazz pianists don't use the pedal unless they absolutely need to. Um, and sometimes that happens more often like in ballad playing or that kind of thing. But usually with a middle, te what a mid tempo thing, a Latin thing, a stride thing, honestly, like very little, if at all with the pedal, okay? But all that to be said, I'm telling you these things because I see that if you do those things, you're gonna be a really, really great pianist. So keep doing what you're doing, just add those elements, get yourself a really, really good teacher if you don't already have one. Um, check out the greats, watch videos, um, transcribe, um, read transcriptions of solo piano if you want, uh, but then also try to create some of your own stuff. I think that's important as well. Um, and listen, 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 constantly. Um, all right, Dylan, I know this video went long, but I just had a lot to say. Good stuff. I'll see you soon. Be well.